Hey, sorry everybody, my video cut out there, so this is segment two of this episode. Um, I was just reading off, you know, the last part of the lineup for tonight. Yeah, so there's defense pairings with Matheson and Savard, Edmondson and Barron, Kovacevic and Weidman, you know, Montembo is in that. Um, yeah, same look, Edmondson and Barron together tonight, you know, Matheson was put with Savard tonight, school is out. Um... You know, Kovacevic was a wide man. That wasn't a bad pairing, I guess. You know, <laughs> Matheson really stood out tonight with, my God, that was that was a huge, massive win um, acquiring Matheson in the offseason. He's just, he's just steamrolling everybody right now. The way he just drives through people because of his skating ability and the way he angles his skates in full speed to cut people off and just push through people that way. And the way he just sees the ice and knows where the open areas are while he's under pressure is incredible. And he's just so active and so mobile and just asserting himself and leading the play all over the ice in all three areas. It's incredible to watch him right now. He really is our number one defenseman right now. Um, you know... <clears throat> I really liked Gurionov tonight. Thought that uh, he really needs a presence of someone that knows what they're going to do with the puck right away. They're not trying to mess around with it. He's just a shoot first mentality. Knows where to go. To get knows how to get into those quiet scoring areas off the rush, and just um, gets the puck. You know, and he's not afraid to shoot, and he has that wicked backhand, that wicked snapshot, deadly accurate. You know, it's it's scary. Gurionov shot. So those are some bright spots tonight. Um, that Hoffman was pretty heavy on the puck. And, you know, he wasn't careless defensively like he sometimes can be tonight. He was seemed like he was parked in the right spots in the defensive zone, you know, anticipating to play defensively pretty good. So there's that, <laughs> you know. Um, I thought the Habs took it to Tampa pretty well. But at the end of the day, you know, a playoff team that's hungry to solidify their position in the playoffs is going to make their mark and um, take a hold of the scoring chances that they get. And, you know, we did have some defensive lapses. Uh, like I said earlier, tried to make one too many passes in our own zone and just miss commu poor communication at times defensively. And um, I noticed a couple times playing man-on-man -man in our own zone, we lost – we lost our guy and just let open areas open up in the defensive zone at times. And, you know, Tampa Bay took advantage of that a little bit. But, you know, with everybody out of the lineup and, you know, the players we do have, what are you really, really going to do? The effort was there for the most part. <laughs> you know, the care level was there. That's all you can really ask of this team right now with the amount of injuries we have. Yeah, so last part I want to touch on, a little bit of drama. You know, I'm sure you guys have already heard on other channels and other different media outlets about Jonathan Drouin, but my God, I'm getting a little fed up with this. Um, after that wild, wild West game um, in Florida, obviously one of the worst defensive games I've seen the Habs play in a long time. Martin St. Louis wanted to call a team meeting, a serious team meeting before a really, really intense practice Friday. And just go over coverage schemes, go over different plays, and just go over um, situations where everybody was making mistakes defensively in that game in Florida. A serious practice, you know, in a year of development, not just for the rookies and not just for the call-ups, but a, a development as a team, as for the team concept of development. And this was an important meeting to have. And Drew Ann just blew, completely blew it off, just decided to stay at the hotel, even though, you know, I've been told the hotel is literally like 20 feet away from the rink. Uh, he just didn't show up. And he just showed up for the practice after the meeting. And Martin St. Louis didn't want any of it. I mean, he didn't let him practice. And then, you know, um, he had to dress Drew in for this game because, you know, simply – we couldn't afford to not have him in the lineup with the amount of injuries we have. Caden Gooley going down for this game, uh, but I thought it was I thought it was good he let him sit on the bench, you know, and have to have him sit there throughout the whole duration of the game. Um, from my experience playing hockey growing up, 
I actually had that happen to me one time, uh, and I can I can say from experience that it, that's not a fun time. Having to sit there and watch your teammates go out and uh, shift after shift, and you're just sitting there feeling pretty uh, feeling pretty lonely on that bench for what feels like an eternity before the game's over. So I hope the message was sent, and I hope they just move on from it. And you know, I don't know. Obviously, it's probably not a good idea to to get rid of him until the end of the season. But I just think you know. He does bring a little bit of value to the team right now in terms of the lack of bodies we have, regular NHL bodies we have. So it's important to keep him in the lineup. But I hope he just takes it serious until the end of the season at least. Well, that's all I got for this episode. I'm going to try to put out another episode tonight about, uh, or this evening, just about a, a whole recap on the Habs week. You know, that game against Colorado and, you know, the start of the, the three-game road trip in Pittsburgh and then Florida. And, then, you know, I just went over the game here in Tampa, go over um, some news about the Habs and some prospects, what's going on, 